When introducing a unit on oxidation and reduction, I like to reinforce some new terms. Oxidation, reduction, oxidizing agent, and reducing agent. So I perform this demonstration so that we can apply those terms to an actual experiment. Now what I'm going to be doing is using four solutions. And I'm going to be combining them in this round bottom flask. Now, do you need to use a round bottom flask? No, but it does make a pretty spectacular product. But we'll talk about what else you can use after I have done the experiment. Now, I'm going to start by taking my first solution and pouring it in. And this is a solution of dextrose, a sugar solution. And I would tell my students that. Next, I take two solutions, one which has silver ion and the other has ammonium nitrate, and I mix those together in a beaker so that they're combined thoroughly, and then I pour them in. Now, right now, nothing much is happening. And then my last solution is a solution of sodium hydroxide. And when you put those together, it looks a little bit unpleasant. And uh, the students seem to think that, wow, that's pretty yucky. And then I start swirling it. And you'll notice that I'm wearing some gloves with this. Uh, silver solutions, silver nitrate is my source of silver ion. You know that silver solutions have a tendency to stain your skin. So even though I've got this pretty well stoppered up, that can happen. Now, while I'm spinning this around, and it takes a few moments, and temperature is also a factor. So sometimes we have to make sure it warms up a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about mirrors in general, and that is that we all know that mirrors are expensive, and one of the reasons why they are expensive is because of the silver. But it also depends on the quality of the glass as well, and that's why if you have a mirror that is not done well, or it's chipped off, you're going to want to take off all the silver and re-silver the mirror, because the glass itself is important. All right, at this point, I think that we can observe that we have formed a mirror. Now, safety concerns here. Inside the flask, we have excess reagent, and that reagent can cause problems if it's allowed to sit. So what I'm going to do now is to pour it off into a waste beaker. I'm going to rinse my flask out with water. And I'm going to add the rinse also to the beaker. And we'll do that a couple of times. You'll notice that the silver stays on the flask. That's also a question my students ask. Well, how long is that going to stay on the flask? And actually, you can do things to make it more permanent. Now. I'm going to add more water to this to dilute it. And I just want to stress the safety issue that there are Flynn disposal methods for dealing with that after the fact. But right now, it's OK to stay there. Now, what we want to do is talk about the actual reactions here. So I'm going to go to the chalkboard, and we're going to discuss the chemistry of this. Now, with my students, I would say, What's the very obvious product here? Well, it's silver, right? So I'd write down silver and put a little SX next to it because it's elemental silver. But if you recall, one of my solutions didn't have silver per se in it. What it had was silver ion, Ag plus, aqueous silver. It was silver nitrate. So to go from Aq, silver ion to silver solid, we need an electron, don't we? And I'll say to my students, which side are we going to put that on to go from a plus charge to a zero? And we'll put that one electron over here on the left side, and then I'll reinforce that term reduction, that this is, this half reaction is a reduction. Now, you can't have oxidation without reduction and vice versa. So to have this reduction, something had to be oxidized. 
In other words, we need a reducing agent. And the chemistry of what's going on with that reducing agent is a little bit complex. If you teach something about organic chemistry, you can deal with it there because the reducing agent happens to be the sugar. It's the dextrose. Okay, And so if you want to go into the oxidation of dextrose, you know, you can do that in an organic chemistry component of the class. Now, as far as the other solutions, I just simply say that the sodium hydroxide and the ammonium nitrate were there to create the environment for this reaction to happen. But these are the two key components. Now, this is interesting to see it in a round bottom flask, but uh, to show you that, you know, you can use a Florence flask, and it works very nicely. But something that you can also do is a Christmas tree ornament. And this is a perfectly clear Christmas tree ornament. I'm going to do the very same reaction. Uh, in this case, uh, rather than using a cork, I'm going to cover it with parafilm. And that's a matter of just hoping to seal it off a little bit better because it's hard to find a cork that just fits that opening. So again, let's go through the routine. We're going to put our sugar solution in. We're going to mix together our silver ion with our ammonium nitrate. Pour that in. And then lastly, add in our sodium hydroxide. And then take the parafilm and stretch it over. I always tell my students the parafilm is like stretch wax paper. So we're going to seal that up. And then we're going to swirl that as well. Now, again, this takes a little bit of time. So remember I was talking about resilvering mirrors and how they go through this process. And I actually called up some places in my hometown area of St. Louis. And I said, I know you've got to use silver iron because we're making a silver mirror, but what do you use for your reducing agent? And one company wouldn't even tell me. It's like they thought I was going to go out and take business from them in the chemistry lab, I guess. But another company said, you know, we just go to the store and we buy sucrose. Now, for those of you who know a little bit of biology, sucrose is not a reducing sugar. But what they do is they heat up the sucrose and hydrolyze it to glucose and fructose. Let's bring this over and add some water to it. And so what they do is hydrolyze the sucrose to glucose and fructose, each of which happens to be a reducing sugar. And that's how they make their mirrors. Now, obviously, I don't think they're sitting around swirling a big mirror, so I haven't seen how they do this, but uh, you know they probably have to s flow the silver solution over the surface here. Now, let me just uh, set this up here so we can get a good look at it. And you never know if this is going to always work for you, so I uh, have one that was prepared just yesterday. And um, again, this will last quite a while, and you can treat the inside with some kind of varnish to make it permanent. Now, what if you have some really nice flask like this? And what if you'd really like to, say, use it over and over again because you have one of these? And it is really important that that flask be clean. In fact, this one is straight off the shelf here at Flynn. But in my classroom, I would put in a fume hood, put some nitric acid in here. Nitric acid will dissolve the silver. And then I would uh, have those fumes of nitrogen dioxide you know, be expelled through the fume hood, rinse it out again, and just reuse it. And I have gone back to back in classes actually using a flask like this. So great way to reinforce the terminology that we use when we introduce oxidation and reduction, because they can see it being put to work right from the get-go.